Hello again, classy people, this is Josh the Top Hat Gamer, and this week I'm reviewing Splatoon. It feels like forever since Nintendo released a new IP, and even longer since they released a shooter. So of course when Splatoon was unveiled at E3 2014, people went a little bit nuts. Was the crazed reception justified? Is Splatoon actually any good? Let's take a look. Splatoon is set in the fictional Tokyo-styled city of Inkopolis, where the friendly Inklings wage a constant turf war against the nefarious Octolings, an alien race of octopus-like creatures. When Inkopolis' main source of power is stolen, it's up to you, under the leadership of Captain Cuttlefish, to save the day. The narrative may be as shallow as a kiddie pool, but it's charming and fun and gives the game a good excuse to send you on a few missions to learn the game's mechanics, all while experiencing its simple yet memorable visual style. Splatoon's most noticeable quality is obviously its liberal use of vibrant colors, and its surprisingly noteworthy character designs. The Inklings look almost like characters from the show Codename Kids Next Door, and while the designs look simple at first, the details such as their working ink packs and their strange tentacle hairstyles give them a remarkable style. The soundtrack is upbeat and fast-paced, which suits the style of gameplay perfectly, as well as the light-hearted tone of the game in general. The constant thud as you plaster the levels with coloured ink and the lapping of ink as your squid form swims through it are ever-present during Splatoon, and luckily, these sound effects work well and don't get particularly annoying. In terms of gameplay, the single-player campaign, though short, does provide an interesting experience, with fun combat sections against surprisingly varied enemies. The majority of missions will focus on you taking on different varieties of Octolings, but there are also some mildly challenging platforming sections that utilise your ability to traverse any area covered in your ink. It's a genuinely fun mechanic, allowing you to climb up walls, move faster, and remain hidden from opponents, giving you an opportunity to flank them whether they're human or AI enemies. The highlight of the single player gameplay is definitely the boss fights. They often utilize the skills you've learned throughout your adventure to expose and attack their weak spots, and they're certainly a lot of fun. The final boss in particular is an excellent way to close off the campaign. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of Splatoon utilizes a unique twist on top of its solid shooting mechanics. In the single-player missions, you'll generally just shoot ink at enemies, occasionally covering your ground and walls to use them for maneuvering. In the multiplayer, however, you'll be focused on the ground more than the enemy team, as the games are literally a turf war. The aim of the game is to cover as much of the battlefield as possible in your team's color, and taking down opponents while not the focus does allow you to make a push towards the headquarters. Additionally, killing an opposing player will cause them to explode in your color, splattering the surrounding area. Like I said, getting kills isn't the focus, but it certainly has its benefits. The various weapons of Splatoon provide a nice way to switch up how you approach battles. The standard gun works well for covering ground and enemies alike, but guns like the sniper rifle allow for longer range approaches, while the paint roller lets players constantly cover ground while they zip around the battlefield. A lot of people have made claims that the weapons aren't overly balanced and that the roller is overpowered. I disagree. The roller, like the majority of special weapons, has at least one glaring flaw. In this case, its severely short range means that anyone with a standard weapon can deal with rollers before they become an issue. My only real issue as far as weapons go is that you can't change your loadout once the turf war starts. It's really dumb when you start a match only to find out that all four members of your team have taken the exact same loadout. Additionally, the gyroscopic motion controls are sometimes a handful to deal with. While you can disable these controls, I think it'd be better to start the game with an option for this. It took me a stupid amount of time dealing with this less than ideal control scheme before I figured out that it could even be changed. Maybe that's my mistake, I don't know. My biggest problem with most multiplayer shooters is the downtime between respawning and getting back into the fight. Even if Splatoon didn't allow you to super jump your way to your allies, the fact that this game's focus is on painting the ground means that this downtime doesn't really exist. It really does feel different to most multiplayer shooters. Games almost always come down to the wire, and while the lack of voice chat means you can't really coordinate with teammates, it also means you're not going to be verbally assaulted by overbearing teammates. If multiplayer is not really your thing, then you probably come to the wrong place. Its single-player campaign, while fun and interesting, isn't very long. And although there are some collectibles to find throughout the story, it's not enough to say that the game is worth the price of admission unless you're interested in the multiplayer. Hell, even as far as the multiplayer goes, the amount of levels isn't particularly high, but there are plenty of weapons and gear to unlock as you go. The way the levels enter rotation is strange, and even now I'm not sure if I've experienced all of the levels, as they come and go in groups of two. To its detriment, Splatoon even locks certain challenge mode content away behind their amiibo figures. 
By using one of these figures, you'll be given the ability to play through single player levels with an entirely different weapon. Completing these challenges will give you special gear. While I'm not opposed to the concept of amiibo content, attaching this much to a collectible that so few have been able to easily attain without any other way of unlocking it is rather dubious. At the end of the day, Splatoon is a delightful experience, whose vibrant and instantly recognizable visual design and simple approachable gameplay make it a fun time for all ages, whether you're familiar with shooters or not. Though it doesn't offer a lot in the way of content, its core gameplay mechanic keeps matches feeling fast and fun, and I feel like it'll take a while for this to lose its appeal. Splatoon gets the Top Hat Gamer rating of good. Its colorful design, surprisingly interesting single player content, and its fun, unique approach to multiplayer make it an easy game to recommend for any multiplayer level gamers out there. But be warned, it's a little low on content at its time of release, and unless you have all three of the appropriate amiibo figures, you're almost paying for two thirds of a game. Multiplayer lovers with Wii U systems should check this out, but at this stage it's certainly not worth getting the system for. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the review informative. If you missed last week's review on The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, or the debut of Tuesday Newsday, click on the annotations. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm both a kid now and a squid now, and I need to get this looked at urgently.